Hello, it's Mr. Esty, and we're back with some work on frequency tables. So in our last video, we made a frequency table out of a whole mess of data. It looked like this, and we were able to organize it to look like this. And I can just copy this table and paste it directly into a doc. The formulas aren't going to mess up or anything. We're going to get the numbers pasting perfectly. Look at that, beautiful. Okay, we are not done though because we also need to know how to do a relative frequency table. You can see here that I've made a relative frequency table. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to start with my absolute frequency table. And remember, a relative frequency table is the exact same thing as this except it uses percentages instead of absolute numbers, instead of counting. So I'm going to skip a column and just copy and paste my frequency table. I'm going to adjust my, my column so that everything looks nice. You can actually double click on the edge of the column to resize it perfectly. It's a pretty cool thing. I'm going to make sure that everything is center aligned, again, to make it look nice. I'm going to also make sure that I've actually spelled everything correctly because that could make serious problems if I am not spelling things correctly. That could be a serious problem. Okay, so now what are we going to do? So first of all, in order to get the percentage for each of these numbers, we have to add up all of these numbers to find the total number of votes. And then we have to divide this number by the total. Well, there's actually a really convenient way to add up all the numbers. I'm going to use the sum formula. So I'm going to put in an enter that tells the computer I'm writing a formula. And I'm just going to write SUM for sum. Sum means you're adding a series of numbers up. Now I'm going to make a parentheses. And the information that the sum formula needs is what range of cells are we adding up. In this case, we're adding up all of these cells. Note that I am not adding up these cells because these are going to change. So I'm adding up all of these cells. Boom, 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 boom. I did that by clicking and dragging. You could also type out B2 colon B14. That would work just fine. And that's the only thing that the sum formula needs. So I'm going to close parentheses and press enter. Boom, 43. So it looks like there are 43 votes here. I would recommend that you check that. Um, this is not a very difficult piece of addition. Just make sure that this is right. All right, that's the first part. So now we know that 43 is the total number of votes. So a simple way to do this would just be to do 4 divided by 43, and that will give you a percentage. Simple. If you want to automate it, though, and get a little fancy, you can make a formula here, too. You can go equals, and now instead of writing the number 4, which would work, I could go equals 4 divided by 43, it will give me the answer, but I want to make it so that it will automatically update. So I'm going to say equals B2. That means whatever number is in B2, computer will go look, check for it, and use that number. I'm going to use the slash key for divide. Remember, fractions are the same thing as division. And then I could write 43, but again, I want to make it auto-update. So I'm going to just repeat my formula from before, sum of these guys. And now I'm done. So the computer, when I press enter, the computer is going to check cell B2 to figure out what number is there. And then it's going to divide that number by whatever the total of all of these numbers added up is. So it's going to calculate all of these numbers, add them up, and then use that to divide 4. And there we get a decimal. So you might 
be saying at this point, well, Mr. Esty, that's great, but we need a percentage. That's a decimal. Now, this is a very easy conversion, right? You just move the decimal point to two point places back. But in order to make things easier still, the computer will convert it automatically for you if you press the percent button right here. Now, bear in mind, once you press the percent button, it is really hard to unpercent your numbers. If you hit the percent button by accident, it can be a pain in the butt to try to get back to regular numbers. So if you have to do that, you can go to Format and Number and look at all these options. Um, automatic makes the computer guess at what kind of number you've got. This is how you get rid of percent if, if you need to. You click on Number. Of course, we already are a percent. You can put it in scientific notation. This is useful in physics class. Uh, you can make it be money and look how many different ways there are to write money. You can make it a date. You can make it a time. There's a lot of things we can do. But in this case, we want it to be a percentage. And there we go, 9.3%. So the benefit of putting in B2 and this range instead of the numbers is now I can just drag this down. Before I do that, I want to remember my dollar sign. That's to make sure that this 2 doesn't change. I do not want the computer to start at B3 next time or B4. I want the computer to always start at B2 and always go to B14. This B2, however, I want that to change because I want the next cell to look at German Shepherd numbers and then Poodle numbers. So I've, I check to make sure I have my dollar signs, and now I just drag down. And I'm done. There's my frequency table. And just, sorry, there's my relative frequency table. So I'm going to label this relative frequency. And again, I'm going to resize so it fits. Just like my frequency table, I can highlight this, copy it, and paste it right onto a doc. No problem. I would not like to link to a spreadsheet, so there we go. And as you can see, it came out fine. These percentages did not mess up, and we're good to go.